So last video, we talked about how a newborn attains immunity passively through its mother. The maternal antibodies aren't gonna last though. The animal's own immune system will inevitably need to step up and learn to protect the body from harmful pathogens. One way it can do this is by encountering the pathogen, getting sick, and learning from that. Or we can get rid of the getting sick part by introducing the immune system to a weaker or sometimes dead pathogen by vaccination. The thing is, the presence of maternal antibodies will inhibit the young animal's own immune response. They're helping protect the animal from pathogens, yes, but it keeps the animal's immune system from learning on its own. The degree of interference depends on the concentration of maternal antibodies, though. Let me introduce this graph. On the y-axis, we have the amount of maternal antibodies present, or the maternal antibody titer. On the x-axis, we have the age of the animal measured in weeks. Over time, the maternal antibody titer decreases. I'm going to introduce a new term here. The amount of time it takes for the maternal antibody titer to get to half of its original amount is known as the half-life. In this example, it's two weeks. When that amount of time passes again, it'll decrease by half again, and will continue to do so until the maternal antibodies are gone. Another thing, the level at which maternal antibodies are protective of the young animal is termed maternal antibody protection level. We can abbreviate it to this one here. So in this example, from the age of 0 to 6 weeks, the animal is protected by maternal antibodies. And then, the level at which maternal antibodies interfere with vaccination, we'll call the vaccine interference level, which we abbreviate to this. So here, from 8 weeks old onward, the animal is responsive to vaccination. But what's this little space here in the middle? Well, that's when the animal is not protected by maternal antibodies anymore, and isn't responsive to vaccination yet. This is a window of susceptibility, where the animal is susceptible to disease. Of course, this graph is only an example. In reality, there are different antibodies for different diseases. The antibody levels against canine distemper, for example, may fall below the protective levels before those of canine parvovirus will. And each animal's graph will be different from another's, depending on factors like the antibodies the mother possessed during gestation and after parturition, and whether the antibodies were successfully transferred to the offspring. If, for example, a pup was orphaned and never got to suckle colostrum, they can make their own antibodies soon after birth. Cause they kinda have to. And can be vaccinated as early as two weeks old. But on average, in puppies, the maternal antibodies decrease to below vaccine interference level by about 10 to 12 weeks of age. But this may range from 6 to 16 weeks of age. This is why vaccination schedules in veterinary clinics usually start at 6 to 8 weeks, then continued at 3 to 4 week intervals. By 16 weeks old, we can be sure that there are no maternal antibodies left to interfere with the vaccination. Question. Why not just wait till the puppy's 16 weeks old to vaccinate? Well, if you do that, you're leaving a huge opportunity for disease to occur if the puppy's maternal antibodies fall below productive levels at 6 weeks old. And knowing how deadly those diseases can be, that's a pretty big risk. Some of those diseases I've discussed in previous videos. Anyway. And on the opposite extreme, you could vaccinate repeatedly from birth to 16 weeks old, but that's a lot of vaccines that won't work and would be a pretty huge waste. So the vaccination schedule is a pretty good middle ground. To recap, in this video, we talked about how maternal antibodies can interfere with vaccination, and when to start vaccinating as the levels decrease. In the next video, we will go into greater detail about the vaccines puppies and kittens receive.